Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. If you've ever needed to convert a video to images, this is Change Video to Images. I think a great tool to do this is Adobe Media Encoder. This is part of Premiere Pro. So if you've just got Premiere Pro, you have Media Encoder. If you've got a Creative Cloud account, you also have Media Encoder. And people normally think of this as a video export format, but it's actually images too, any of, any of the, the uh, presets in there. So I want to show you how to convert a video to images, how to select which uh, frames you're exporting, including just one frame, how to do an overlay and add effects. Let's go have a look. So this is Media Encoder here, and Media Encoder has its own media browser that you can browse your media on your computer, or you can drag and drop into the queue. And I'm gonna drag this clip right here into the queue. Now, when you're dragging, you get two options. Drop here as a separate source or stitch together. And I'm just going to do this as a, uh, a regular source, stitching together as if you had multiple videos and you wanted to stitch them together, or if you actually had a whole bunch of images to stitch together as a video, this would do that. It would convert uh, images back to video, but we're doing it the other way. Now, by default, this is usually on H.264, which is the most common format and match source. And this is the location of where it's going to go. So I'm gonna click here and I'm exporting it out to this drive folder right there. Um, you can obviously export it to any place. Don't put this, don't point this to the desktop because you could actually accidentally end up with literally 10,000 images all over your desktop. So at least make one folder for this and export it out. I've got a folder on my hard drive. So you can pick from the list, but if you click on one of these two, this is the location of where it's going, but if you click on one of these two, you'll get a very useful preview that comes up and it's, it's much better to do this. So once the preview comes up, your video will show up on the left-hand side and your sources on the right-hand side. So three formats that I would suggest, depending on your use, JPEG and PNG are a common formats, and TIFF if you wanted the absolute best quality output. Exporting out to TIFF won't make your video still images any better, but it won't make them any worse. It's gonna keep them the best quality. So if you're going out to things like Lightroom and you want to continue processing in there, TIFF is a good choice. They are quite a bit bigger than JPEG. Ping is a good source, but for my example here, I'm gonna choose uh, JPEG. It's highly compressed and uh, will save a lot of drive space. So the, the format is JPEG, the preset is match source. So it's, Media Encoder is gonna do its best to match the source. And you can see the quality is all the way up to 100. And any of these checkboxes here are automatically set for you. For instance, my video is HD, so it's automatically set. I could change that in here and resize it. So this could be a 4K video that I'm exporting out a smaller frame. Also, the export as sequence is turned on. This means every single frame of video will be exported out. So if there's an average of 30 frames or 24 frames per second times however many seconds or maybe a couple minutes, like I said, this could be thousands of images, but uh, we're gonna make a, a smaller amount. Those are really the only ones that you really have to worry about. Don't go in here and click on maximum render quality and all of that crap. It's not gonna make a difference. Um, on the bottom left is your playhead and you can go through your video. And if you wanted to just export out one frame, let's say this frame, there's a better one where she's looking at him right there. Let's say you just wanted that frame, turn off export as sequence, click okay, and click the start button up here. Watch over here on the left, boom. There it is, there's our one image that we exported out. Maybe you just need a, a quick thumbnail of an image that way, it's a very quick way to do that. I'm gonna delete that out of there because we're gonna be doing a few more things. Okay, so 
because I've done this once, this is grayed out and also the uh, start queue is grayed out. So you have to either drag it back in or with this selected, if you duplicate it, it makes a new one and I can just delete that out. of. So it's not gonna keep it in there. Once it's finished uh, exporting out once, it's it's done. So I'll, I'll keep refreshing that with a new version. And you can see it keeps everything the way I had it, which is the custom setting um, in the format. I'm gonna open this up again. Instead, I'm gonna turn this back onto sequence and I don't wanna export this whole thing out, but you can change this in an out point. So I could import, I could export a bunch of images, maybe this spin here, when she's in front of the camera. So now I'm gonna export out that in and out point. Again, watch my folder over here on the left. I'll click go and there's the spin. And that was 46 images um, right there. So I'm gonna go through those really quick. There they are. That's the spin. Again, let me delete these. Duplicate this one more time and show you another option. You can use the built-in effects in Media Encoder to add a LUT or a look and you can also have an image overlay. So if you wanted to watermark these, it's really easy. In fact, you can use a native Photoshop file with a whole bunch of layers and logos and things like that. And that's what I'm gonna use right now. So in the effects, the bottom ones aren't really important. This is mostly for broadcast, but the Lumetri looks, if you turn that on, you can select any LUT or look, or I could pick one uh, that I want here. So I'm just gonna grab that one there. I, it's not much of a difference. I'm gonna choose something that's making a difference. I, I wouldn't choose this one, but I want it to be different enough for you to see it. So I've applied a lot and there's an image overlay and I'm gonna turn that on and I'll choose my image and it's a Photoshop file. Shows up exactly in the middle, middle at 100%. You can click and drag to move it over. So if I want this down on the bottom right as a little watermark, change the opacity, fade that down. I'll go back to my full clip but this time I'll go back to video and I'll turn off the frame rate. So right now the frame rate is almost 24 frames per second. And you saw even on a tiny little in and out point, I had 46 images. Well, what if I wanted one image per second? That would be cool. Let's go in there, click one image per second. And I'm going to add the overlay and Click OK and run this. Now let me just make this larger. And you can see each one of these is now completely different. So if we look at each one, I'll open that up and you can see it has an overlay on it. It has the look applied, and this is much more useful than just a whole string of images. All right, so that looks good. And the best part of this is, if we duplicate this again, open this up again, and we keep all of these settings. So the setting was one frame per second, both of those effects on here, JPEG, if we click on this save preset, and I'll call it my media images, save effects, click okay. Now let's go back and delete all of these images, get rid of everything in here. Let's grab a completely different video 
and there's my media images preset. I don't even have to open that up. I want to make sure that my location is right. Now I'll hit go. I don't know how long this video is, so I don't know how many still images. All right. So now it exported that out. And you can see the overlay. It's a little bit light. I could have uh, maybe made that a little darker um, or, or come up with something. There you go. Pretty darn easy. Um, export out a whole bunch of stills from a video, either one still or every second or every two uh, or every two a second, depending on how you want to work with that. If you can, if you exported these out as TIFFs, then it would be great to import those into Lightroom if you want to further work on them, the overlay. But the best thing I think is saving those preferences because. It's unlimited. You can save as many preferences. It could be my media one per second, media one per second with uh, overlay, um, you know, five a second with a, without an overlay, however you want to work with it. Media Encoder is a pretty darn powerful application, and I could grab all of those and put them back in, and I could stitch them back into an image. So what do you think? You find this useful? If you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe, please. It really does mean a lot to us. If you want to support us some more, you can do that on our store, videoreveal.com slash shop, where you can donate once uh, monthly or any amount you want. You can also pick up a bunch of free stuff uh, at the store. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to figure out the easiest way to do the kinds of things that you're thinking of doing.